Hello, this is David or Dave once again and welcome to my YouTube channel. This will be another video, tutorial or do-it-yourself guide also how-to on again how you can rejuvenate, restore, bring back from the dead your supposed uh, dead sealed lead acid rechargeable batteries. As an explanation, the scenery has uh, changed a little bit because I'm not in my usual place of recording or uh, the room where I produce uh, my videos, at least the ones that I have up to this day. I'm basically uh, located in the basement part of my house, another part or another room where I have some of my machinery positioned and this could be also called as a, another workshop as such. The first video that I recorded in regards to uh, revitalizing, restoring uh, VRLA or SLA, therefore valve regulated lead acid or sealed lead acid rechargeable batteries uh, was when I was describing Aussie Kalinan's principle on how you can bring back from the dead uh, various batteries. The one that I used in that video presentation was an absorbed glass mat type of battery or AGM battery. So this one that you see in front of you is also of the same technology production. And this video presentation will focus on another principle on how you can restore your batteries, but it's you could say it's less controversial, less charlatan, unlike the Aussie Kalinan's approach. So the information that will be disclosing in this video is you could say much more established uh, in the, you could say, electronics community. All of the necessary uh, parts list, shopping list, uh, circuitry diagram or the schematics, and furthermore, overall description on how this circuitry works, how you can make your own, um, because this is the purpose of this video to disclose information on that. Everything, uh, will be linked in the description part of the video, so be sure to check that out. So, uh, who is the author of this uh, ingenious design? I don't know what is uh, his full name, but the initial is, at least for the first part of his name, is K, family name Walraven, with a W. Uh, and the title of the document in which he explained everything uh, was labeled Lead Acid Battery Revitalizer, uh, also known as a desulfation device for worn out batteries. The article was published in a popular uh, electronics uh, magazine called Elector Electronics. It was on page 14 in the year 2001, uh, September. So hopefully it wasn't published on 9-11, but you never know. And this device can also be used uh, not only to bring uh, dead batteries back to life, to recondition them, but it can also serve as a general conditioner for new batteries. The author suggests that you can uh, attach this circuitry directly onto the terminals of, let's say, your car battery, therefore a wet cell type of sealed uh, lead acid rechargeable battery. Even though, of course, uh, prior to that, it is advised also that you put the entire circuitry in some sort of a metal uh, sealed uh, box to lessen um, the interference around it or coming from the circuitry. But I don't know how this would affect, let's say, if you were to mount this circuitry in a modern car onto the terminals of the, the batteries of the ROF because Modern cars, they have a lot of these sensitive electronics, they have onboard computers, but probably for older cars, if you want to uh, revitalize or use it as a regular conditioner for your car battery, I'm sure that there wouldn't be any problem with that. Now, why would it be ill-advised to use the circuitry on a modern car or attach it to the battery terminals of the ROF? Well, the circuitry generates a quite high uh, voltage spikes. Uh, according to the document, it it can produce up to 50 or 60 volts uh, spikes. And now the question is, how does that affect the overall electronics of your car? So that is a security question that you should address uh, on whether you would want to install the circuitry as a 
general reconditioner for your wet cell 12 volt rechargeable battery. However, on the plus side, the current consumption of the circuitry is very low. It is uh, rated or stated to work at around something as low as 20 milliamps, which is really low. So you can basically just use the capacity or the power that is remaining in the battery as such only to connect the circuitry onto the battery terminals. You don't need an external power source, uh, even though, of course, the author suggests that if you go in this manner, you have to pay attention that you don't over discharge your battery. So for the purpose uh, of my experiment or my endeavors in rejuvenating these uh, rechargeable batteries, I always use a 12 volt input powered source that is connected onto the battery. So it doesn't over discharge when the circuitry is doing its, uh, you could say, magic. The input power that I'm providing to the battery and the circuitry, I'm sure I don't need to explain it, but nevertheless, uh, here you have the black alligator clip that is hooked up onto the minus polarity or the minus uh, terminal of the battery, and the plus side is then connected onto this resistor that is in between the input power source and the actual circuitry. I'll, of course, zoom in on all of these parts and later on in the video. So first I'm just going to show you that uh, the information that is printed on the battery itself so that you know what is the one that I'm trying to bring back from the dead. So this is the, <laughs> again, up close shot on the victim if you want to call it. So your standard 12 volt rechargeable battery, 7.2 amp powers of capacity, at least that was the rated nominal uh, capacity when the battery came from the factory what is now <laughs> remains to be uh, tested or is currently unknown then you have of course the rest of the parameters okay now a brief uh, history on the prerequisite condition of the battery when i got it uh, well i basically acquired it a couple of days ago so it hasn't passed a lot of time and when I got the battery uh, when I measured the voltage on it it was at around 9.5 volts which so it wasn't in awful condition but it was definitely below the maximum discharge voltage which is stated at around 10 volts some are even more precarious and they discharge or they uh, recommend that you don't discharge your 12 volt battery anything below 10.5 volts, but nevertheless, it was still in the marginal era of um, salvageability, if I want to call it. Uh, so then I did the chemical part of the rejuvenation or restoration, and afterwards, interestingly enough, the voltage dropped by 1 volt, so to 8.5 volts, and then I uh, connected it to a regular Chinese cheap uh, 12 volt DC power charger, and I was able to get it up to uh, 10.5 volts with a another edition or another version of uh, that charger. I got it up to, I think it was 11.3 volts or 11.26, something like that. But I wasn't able to go anything beyond um, 12 volts. So, uh, in regards to when I have uh, started this. Uh, process of rejuvenation or restoration uh, for the particular battery that you see in front of you, I think I might have uh, connected this battery to Wallraven circuitry probably at around the same time that I hooked up the 6 volt battery, which you've seen in the previous video on this playlist, to the Aussie Kalanans uh, oscillator radiant energy battery charging system. So two days ago, maybe this one has been uh, set to be uh, operated much uh, sooner, so maybe three days ago, something like that. How long am I going to keep on trying to bring this patient back from the underworld of Hades, if I was to be a bit more poetic? Well, if I was to make a sort of a circuitry comparison design, I think that um, this one, <laughs> well, then again, depends on the prerequisite condition of the battery. I think with this battery it might take uh, a little longer 
than the with the six volt version one, but this is just mere conjecture because Wallraven's circuitry design is much more uh, static. There is not much room for variability. Um, it's much more conservative, um, unlike Aussie Callanan's approach. So probably I'll be um, reviving this battery for quite some time, uh, minimum of one month, 30 days. But of course during that time I'll be checking the battery, observing, noting the voltage, and um, also uh, detecting when I disconnect the battery from the circuitry, how much is the voltage drop, where it stabilizes, and most importantly when I'll connect a load onto it, what is the voltage drop on that, because that is, I think, an even better indicator on the state of the battery. So, 30 months minimum, maximum, hmm. I don't know, 7, 8 months, but like I said, it depends on the prerequisite condition of this battery. And considering this one was in a much, really much better state than the 6 volt version one, maybe I'll have luck with this already after 14 days, but this is really being optimistic. 21 days, well, hopefully. We'll see. An important note uh, worthwhile mentioning here is that even though I'm applying external power to the circuitry and the latter itself is being powered by the remaining capacity or power from the battery, there is an unusual amount, audible wise and also visual, uh, of bubbling going around. I have actually removed uh, the cover off and have also removed these rubber caps. Each one goes onto the six portholes of each individual cell, I have removed them uh, because like I said there's a lot of uh, bubbling noise coming from the battery so this is interesting because you know if I was to charge this with a steady voltage and current this would be understandable but because here you have pulsed voltage this is a bit unusual. I'll try to reposition the camera so that you can hear this as well. Hope you can hear that I'll um, move the camera much more closer to the portholes of the battery. Uh, reposition the camera and zoom in on the actual main star of the show if you want to call it even though of course the circuitry goes in tandem with the battery that is uh, going to be rejuvenated but nevertheless uh, as you can see if you did a comparison with the pre-assembled circuitry in the document in the description part of the video this one is a little bit different uh, one thing that sticks out is this compartment over here where you have the alligator clips um, that are clipped onto these wires that come out from the circuitry and here as well. Uh, in this part of the circuitry I should have had a two-way PCB terminal block mounted onto it but uh, and also of course uh, this uh, resistor here is a different color than the one in the picture but uh, the entire circuitry as such was built with two things in mind. One was uh, the possibility of uh, better tweaking, so it has had some changes done to it. Uh, it isn't completely, completely according to the schematic. And the other thing is it was built in mind by using only the elements that were around the house. So I definitely could have ordered that uh, terminal block of eBay, but I decided not to, at least at that time. And also this uh, resistor here is, is an additional uh, feature or safety precaution for the circuitry as such. Now in regards to the lit or glowing LEDs that you see on the right side of the assembled circuitry, now the red one I think is supposed to represent just simple general power indication, meaning that the circuitry is powered, every component uh, is getting uh, the food and the water for it, if you want to call it as such. While the, uh, the lit uh, green LED, that signifies that the battery that I'm trying to rejuvenate is actually alright. Well, because I have kept this uh, 
battery connected only for about three days, you know, it's already possible that it is uh, rejuvenated or has been fixed, but, you know, I'll keep it hooked up for a longer period of time just to be uh, you know, certain fully. So the bottom LED here at this one was only lit and of course only the, the top red LED. That would mean that the battery is heavily uh, sulfated in a very poor state. So the yellow LED would indicate that the battery is recovering but it is still not in good condition. And of course the green one then signifies that the battery has been brought back from the dead. I'll just disconnect the circuitry and we'll have a much more closer look at it. So this is now the much more personal approach or up close shot on the circuitry. Also here these two ICs they don't have a intermediate uh, connector between so you can remove the chip they have been firmly soldered onto the circuitry as such. Now if someone was to make a statement in the comment section that this is one ugly, dusty, dirty uh, printed circuitry board, at least on this side, uh, you wouldn't be very much far off, I agree. Because, you know, primarily as it is stated in the document, the circuitry should be placed, mounted into a metallic box and then properly secured if not at least a plastic one, but this one has been laying around bare naked in my workshop, so dust and other particulates have decided to grab a holiday and occupy the surface of this board. But nevertheless, uh, the circuitry as such is very useful for rejuvenating, restoring, bringing back from the dead uh, these UPS typed uh, rechargeable batteries. Okay, let's Rotate it a little bit so you have every possible angle, even though, of course, uh, in the description part of the video, in the document, uh, picture, and elsewhere, you have all the necessary parts, so a shopping list is available. But nevertheless, I'll show you all the sides of the circuitry. This one will be much more tricky. Okay, so now let's just look at the back side. Okay, so this is how it looks like from the back. Here you have a little bit of a burn. That's why I added this resistor here as additional uh, safety precaution. I should have just simply applied some lacquer on the back side of the circuitry. No way I did. I did. But the copper nevertheless oxidized a little bit. So let's flip it again to this. Yeah, a little bit of a burn. I had to make new connections. I forgot all about this. Okay, so this is it. In conclusion, you have reached towards the end of another video presentation, tutorial, guide, uh, do it yourself type of video how to as well on how you can again rejuvenate, restore, recondition, regenerate even your presumably dead or at least weak uh, rechargeable sealed lead acid type of batteries. Uh, the latter that was used in this video presentation was an absorbed glass mat type of battery, so AGM. If you learned something new in this uh, video demonstration, this tutorial, uh, make sure that you leave the like button checked. If you have any questions um, and there was something unclear, leave that in the comment part of the video. The comment section is open. Of course, always be civil, polite. And I'll try to uh, respond to you as soon as possible and the best of my knowledge as well. In addition, also subscribe, uh, share, and we'll see you in another video where I'll be doing again something differently, not like uh, the current and the previous one. So this is David or Dave and have a great day or evening, depending on your time zone.